Okay, so the deal is in calculus, we don't typically use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We love our Greek symbols, our Greek letters. So more often than not, you will see this written as delta y over delta x. Delta representing, it's like a little triangle, representing the change in, the change in y over the change in x. Um, or a lot of times we use f of x instead of y. But it's all the same difference. So what I have here is just a simple parabola. It has a vertex at 4, 4, has x-intercepts at 0 and 8. Not that that's all that uh, significant to what I'm getting ready to talk about, but I'm just trying to throw out all the background information that I can. Um, and I have two random points chosen on this parabola. I have a point at 2, 3, and I have a point at the vertex at 4, 4. And then I have a line drawn through that. That is what we call the secant line. Now, you heard that term in that video that we watched uh, at the beginning of class. This is the secant line. A secant line is drawn through two points of a function. A secant line is drawn through two points of a function. We're also going to talk about tangent lines. Tangent lines are directly related to derivatives, uh, and they only touch one point on a curve. But a secant line goes through two points on a particular curve. Now, I could have picked any other two points. I just picked these for whatever reason. So I have the point at 2, 3 labeled with the coordinates x and f of x. Okay, x and f of x. Instead of the specific points, I just kept it in general terms. So what we're looking at right here on the x-axis between... 2 and 4, that's the change in x, or delta x. So in general, we can label this red point right here, instead of labeling it with its specific coordinates, 4, 4, we can label that as x plus delta x. Okay, we started at the blue, and we added this change in x right here, so that's why we ended up at the x coordinate of this red point. Okay. I'm trying to relate it back to the original point. So the x coordinate is x plus delta x, and the y coordinate is f of x plus delta x. So I plug that new x coordinate, x plus delta x, into my f function, and it'll give me the y value. So, we could calculate the slope of this secant line using this formula, f of x plus delta x, the second y-coordinate minus the first y-coordinate over the change in my x-coordinates, which is just delta x. Now sometimes instead of delta x they'll use an h. So we could do the same thing. x plus h, f of x plus h. There was a problem like that on the review. So, similar idea, f of x plus h minus f of x over the change in your x values here would then be h, x plus h. x plus h minus x leaves you with just h. So, um, you should be familiar with both. Okay, these first three notations are the ones that are most commonly used. The f prime of x, okay, so this is red, f prime of x, um, and that's the derivative of f, okay. Uh, dy over dx, you read that as the derivative of y with respect to x. y prime is the same thing, uh, this big D with subscript of x with y in brackets, Honestly, except in the test, 
textbook, in the notes section, I've never really seen that notation be used. Okay? It's mostly just those first three right there um, that are most commonly, commonly used. Now, let me talk a little bit about our limit definition of the derivative. And I've got a, um, a illustration here to show you this. Okay, so first of all, we've got m with the subscript of x. That is representing the slope at some point x is equal to f prime of x, which is our derivative of the function. Okay, that can be found by finding the limit as delta x approaches zero of the slope of the secant line. Okay, so let me show you. Uh, hopefully this will make sense. All right, I've got this curve right here. You can't really see it on that graph, but a little bit. Okay, I've got this curve, and there's a point right here. I don't know if you can see it. There's a point right there. We want to find the slope of the curve at that point. Now it's a curve, so we can't really find the slope because we only talk about slopes of lines. Okay, so I've got a secant line here. I'm going to put it right there on that point. All right, now the way that it is right now, is that a good approximation of the slope of the curve at this point? Now let me take the line out. Tell me, is the slope right here beside my finger, would you consider that a negative or a positive slope? Negative. negative. Okay, the function's decreasing right there. It's going, the y values are decreasing from left to right. Um, the y values are decreasing as we move from left to right. Oh, that makes a show. Okay, so if I put this secant line in here, right here, is the slope of that secant line a good approximation of the slope of the curve at that point? No, because that has what kind of slope? Positive slope, so it's way off. So my point is, look at the delta x right here, okay? Look at the, the gap between the x values. It's pretty big, right? So as I move this line so that that gap between x values becomes smaller, okay, delta x is approaching zero, it's getting a little bit closer. Right now it has a slope of zero. If I move it a little bit more, okay, my gap is getting smaller between my x values, that's getting a little bit closer to that slope, right? So if I move it, so that this secant line is created by an x value that's like so close to my x value right there that the difference in them is essentially zero, then I've got what is considered a tangent line that represents the slope of the curve at that point. Okay, so as the gap in our x values is getting smaller, as delta x as delta x is approaching zero, this limit represents the slope of the curve at a specific point. Okay? It represents the slope of the curve at a specific point. And that's what we call the derivative, or the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, so first of all, we do need to talk about average rate of change before we get to the instantaneous rate of change. So, um, when you see the words average rate of change of a function, you should automatically think slope. Automatically think slope. When they ask you for the average rate of change of a function, you should think slope. And the steps for that, you plug in the x values, they're going to give you an interval. They're going to give you the x values in the interval. You're going to plug those into your function to get the y values. And then you're going to just simply calculate the slope of that Okay, you're going to calculate the slope over that interval. And it is literally that straightforward. Okay? But most people forget that when they see the word average rate of change, that that cues them to think slope. 
average rate of change automatically, you should think slope. That's all I have to do. It's not really calculus. I'm just calculating slope like I did in like the eighth grade. Okay, and these are going to be like calculator inactive sort of questions, so I'm going to do these computations completely by hand. We have a cubic function, negative x cubed to minus 5x, and they're asking us to calculate the average rate of change over the interval from negative 2 to 3. So that means negative 2 is our first x value, 3 is our second x value, x1, x2 if you want to label them. So I need to start by finding f of negative 2, which means I'm plugging negative 2 into my f function. I think that we've had this clarified, but when there is a negative in front of the uh, uh, variable in the original function, then that means you apply the power and then change the sign of your answer. So we've got negative, negative 8, because negative 2 cubed is negative 8, and negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. So really, we have 8 plus 10. This value is 18. f of negative 2 is 18. f of 3, negative 3 cubed minus 5 times 3. Well, that gives us negative 27 minus 15. That is negative 42. So my average rate of change, you'll see that abbreviated AROC, average rate of change, uh, subtract my Y's over subtracting my X's. Make sure you get them in the right order. Okay, 3 minus negative 2, the y value of 3 minus the y value of 2. So that's what, negative 60 over 5. Subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive, And that is equal to negative 12. So the average rate of change for this function on the interval from negative 2 to 3 is negative 12. So the secant line between negative 2 and 3 is very, very steep, and it is uh, negative, decreasing from left to right. Yes. Yes, that is the slope of the secant line between negative 2 and 3. because you subtract, so it was 3 minus negative 2, subtracting the negative same as adding positive. So yes, negative 12 is the slope of the secant line between x is negative 2 and x is positive 3 for this function. Different function, different slope. Should be negative five. Let's see how we get to